Hi, I'm Carl Frank, an owner and developer of Speedology, the most advanced and effective sports training system available. I developed Speedology as a result of my own graduate study and research, as well as collaboration with some of the top scientists in the world in the fields of sports biomechanics and human performance. Current working relationships with LSU and George Mason University enabled me to continually upgrade and develop new training methodologies and training gear. We're excited about developing a new line of sports training equipment that will have a direct and immediate impact on your performance. I believe that the next generation of sports training equipment will be equipment that is specially designed and used in a manner that produces unmistakable results in your performance after just one set. That's right, results you can actually feel after just one set. I'm committed to bringing training equipment to the sports world that is continually being researched at the highest levels. My colleagues at George Mason University are currently conducting research on my speed bands, and I can't wait to share the results with you. I'd like to personally invite you to visit both of my websites. And while you're there, send me an email and let me know what your training needs are. You can reach me at speedology.com and 3sswing.com. So always train hard, good luck to you, and thanks for watching. First series of stretches we're going to do, we're going to do on the ground. Colette? First, we're going to do a dynamic calf stretch. We're going to attach the stretch strap around the platform of the shoe. The athlete's going to pull straight down on the stretch strap, getting a great stretch in the calf. We're going to hold against the resistance with the strap and do a toe press and press the toe as far as we can. We're going to hold that position for three to five seconds, and then we're going to stretch again. We're going to pull straight down on the strap again, trying to get a little further with the stretch. We're going to repeat this process four or five times. We're going to go straight into a hamstring stretch now. All we're going to do is reach back overhead, pull the strap back as far as we can, and we're going to hold that stretch for 15 to 20 seconds. Now we're going to let the leg go open. We're going to hold the same stretch 15, 20 seconds, pulling back on the strap as far as we can. Hold some tension on the strap, let the leg go all the way over in the opposite direction so now it's closed. And again, we're going to hold as far as we can, 15, 20 seconds. Next, we're going to stretch the thighs. We're going to reattach the strap so it's around the front of the foot. Whichever leg we're on, we're going to roll over to the opposite side, pulling the strap straight up overhead as far as we can, holding 15, 20 seconds. Now we're going to take a knee. We're going to take a big step out with the opposite foot. The key here is to drive the hips forward as far as we can while reaching the upper body back and reaching for the sky as far as we can. So hips are driving forward, shoulders and arms driving back. Next, we're going to assume a push-up position. Once we're in that position, hands can't move. We're going to take right foot, bring it up outside of right hand. We're going to try to bend the elbow all the way to the ground and hold that position for 15, 20 seconds. The motion warm-ups are intended to continue to stretch and putting the body in perfect running form prior to starting the catapult workout. So the first one we're going to demonstrate is the walking lunge. It's important that when we're lunging, we're maintaining perfect sprint mechanics. The heel goes straight to the glute when it leaves the ground and bring it forward nice and short. When we extend, we want to make sure that the arms are in perfect sprint position. That is, hands are at nose level in the front, elbow is up in the back so that the hand clears the hip. If we're at the intermediate level, we're going to take these forwards and backwards. The backwards motion is important that we get an exact reversal of the cycle. That is, knee is up in the front, we want to keep that heel tucked tightly to the glute and extend it backwards behind the body, again, making sure that the arms are in perfect running position. If we're at the advanced level, we want to go forward with the same movement and we want to reverse ourselves 180 degrees and then continue in a backwards motion. The next move we're going to demonstrate is a simple butt kick. We want to make sure that we go nice and easy on these, bringing the heel as close to the glute as we can, making contact if possible. If we're at the intermediate level, we want to take these forwards and backwards. When we hit our mark and transfer to a backwards motion, we want to make sure that there's no change in the movement, only in direction. If we're at the advanced level, we want to hit our mark, rotate 180 degrees, and continue on in a backwards motion. Again, making sure that there's no change in the movement, only in direction. Next motion is a high kick. We're going to do a simple three-step high kick. We want to make sure that when the leg kicks up, we kick it as high as we can. I want the foot to go to head level beyond if possible, making contact with opposite hand. It's a simple one, two, three kick. The next movement is a hop kick. It's a variation of the three-step high kick. The only difference now is that we're kicking on every step. 
The next movement is a simple high knee quick step. We want to make sure that we're not gaining too much ground as we move moving forward. Knees are firing high. We stay tall up top, making sure that the arms are hitting our sprint mechanics. That is, hand is at nose level in the front, elbow is up in the back so that the hand clears the hip. If we're at the intermediate level, we want to take these forwards and go right into a backwards motion. We want to make sure that the only thing changes is direction. There's no change in the movement. If we're at the advanced level, we want to take them forward. When we hit our mark, we're going to rotate 180 degrees and continue into a backwards motion. Again, emphasizing that the only thing changes is direction, not the movement itself. Nathan's going to demonstrate for us now the tuck jump. The tuck jump is performed by the athlete jumping straight up to maximum height without using a descent first, as in a maximal vertical jump. The key component of the tuck jump is firing the hip flexors. So the athlete's going to stay tall up top, head up, back straight, jumping straight up, firing the knees as high as they can, exploding at the hips. Nathan's going to demonstrate one for us now. Nathan, get up. Straight up. The key is that the landing is soft and cushioned. That means the knees have some give in them upon contact, and we don't want to stick the landing with a fully extended leg. Let's demonstrate another one, Nathan. Colette's going to perform for us now a squat jump. We're going to assume a full squat position, thighs parallel with the ground, arms are straight out, hands shoulder level. We're going to thrust the arms downward and backward as fast and hard as we can and explode up from the floor. Colette. And let's take another one. Full squat position. Quick arm thrust down, explode from the legs. Go. Boom, good, excellent. <laughs> Clutch gonna perform a side lunge for us. The side lunge is gonna be formed by stepping out either to the left or the right. We're gonna do them both ways. We're gonna demonstrate going to the right first. So we're gonna go out into a full lunge, Colette. Notice thighs parallel, hips are deep, arms are straight out shoulder level. We want the off leg straight and ankle is stretched and foot is flat and return. Excellent, let's perform another one. Straight out to the side, hips are deep, left leg is straight, right leg is about parallel with the ground, arms are straight out, and we want the left foot flat on the ground and return. Excellent. Jordan's going to demonstrate for us a standing broad jump. The key to maximizing your broad jump is not just to explode with the lower half, but to incorporate the arms into the movement as well. So the ready position is going to be hands about nose level, forehead level, just like Jordan is in now. We're going to drop as quick as we can and explode out. Jordan, let's demonstrate one. Get out. Excellent. Perfect. Jamal's going to demonstrate for us a maximum vertical jump. The key to maximizing your vertical is not just to explode from the lower body, but to also fully incorporate the arms into the movement. So to start a ready position, his hands about nose level, forehead level, we're going to drop as fast as we can, explode with the arms, and drive up off the ground. Jamal, let's demonstrate one. Excellent. Jessica is going to perform a simple parallel squat. In the parallel squat, the hand position is optional, either hands on hips or hands fully extended where the arms are straight and the hands are at shoulder level. We're going to descend into a full squat position, thighs are parallel with the ground. Jessica? And return. Excellent. Notice great balance, arms are straight out, head is up, back is straight. Let's perform one more. Jessica? And return. Beautiful. Jamal is going to demonstrate for us a zigzag with a balanced stop. The key to the stop is that we're fully balanced and you're on the platform of the shoes. This develops great cutting ability when we're cutting left and right. Jamal, let's demonstrate. Excellent. We want to freeze and a complete stop on each land. Jamal is going to demonstrate a continuous zigzag. We're moving forward, we're moving diagonally, and we're moving nonstop on this one. Jamal, let's demonstrate. Excellent. Jamal is going to demonstrate the power skip. The power skip is a commonly used speed improvement drill. The 
key to the power skip is to maximize height and distance. We want to drive for distance. And we want to drive the arms through in the same mechanical position that we use when we're sprinting. So the key there is to drive your backswing hard and fast. So Jamal, let's demonstrate. Height and distance, every cycle. Powerful backswing, excellent. Jessica's gonna demonstrate a side jump with a balanced stop. This drill is outstanding for developing the ability to cut quickly. When we cut and we're on one foot, we have to be able to balance on that foot to be able to get back in the other direction as quickly as possible. Let's demonstrate one, Jessica. Excellent, and return. We're gonna do them both left and right. Off leg comes with us, and when we stop, we freeze, we balance, back and straight, and heads up. Nathan's gonna demonstrate a double broad jump. The key to the double broad jump is that on the first land, we touch and go. So we wanna spend as little time as possible on the ground in the first land and explode out of it as quickly as we can. Nathan, let's demonstrate one. Excellent. Nathan's gonna demonstrate a five yard high knee quick step transitioning into a sprint. Our focus over the course of the five yards is to maintain good form running. Knees nice and high, hands coming up to nose level in the front swing and transitioning with hand clearing the hip in the back swing. To transition into the sprint, hard upper body lean and pulling hard and fast to the back swing. Nathan, let's demonstrate. Excellent. First ladder drill is gonna be a simple high knee drill. We want a good arm swing just like we're sprinting. Both feet need square. It's important that the knees are firing high and the arms are swinging through just like we're sprinting. Hand goes to nose level in the front swing and clears the hip in the back swing. Jamal? Excellent, excellent, excellent. This drill is a high knee action, but moving laterally. So we get both feet knees square, knees are moving high, same arm action as we're sprinting. Jamal? Excellent, excellent. Knees are high, arms are swinging, just like our sprint mechanics. Beautiful. This is a quick step drill. We're moving front to back, two feet in, two feet out. We're moving the feet as quickly as we can, and we're hitting each square. Jessica? And we're walking it down as we go. Excellent. Excellent. Next is a quick foot drill called the scissors. We're gonna have one foot in the ladder, one foot out of the ladder, and we're gonna switch as fast as we can. If we move into our left, we're gonna start with our left foot in, right foot out, and we're gonna walk it down. Colette? Excellent, excellent. Feet are short and quick, both feet in each square. Excellent. This drill is called the Icky Shuffle. We're advancing forward every square with two feet in, one foot out. Nathan? Excellent. Next drill is called Straddle Hops. We're advancing forward, hitting each square, feet stay separated, and don't get them tangled together, and we're gonna go as quick as we can, feet are moving together. Nathan? Excellent. Next drill is called the hopscotch. We're advancing forward every other square and feet are working together, moving from outside the ladder to inside the ladder. Colette? Next drill of bunny hops. Very, very simple to do. We're advancing forward, hitting every square, getting as much height as we can from the ankles. We're not incorporating the knees. Jamal? Excellent, excellent. Excellent. <laughs> this drill is called the scissors, but with a crossover step. So if we're moving to our left, the right foot's gonna cross over on every square. Nathan? Crossover, 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 crossover. Excellent. This drill is called dead leg skips. 
The leg that's outside of the ladder remains relatively straight, while the leg inside of the ladder is working, hitting every square. It's important that when the hip fires forward, that that arm fires back. Nathan? This drill is called jump cuts. We're advancing forward every other square. Feet are working together. We're moving as quick as we can left to right. Jamal? This drill is called a W. We're using front to back movement. We're getting both feet in each square, both feet out of the square. We're advancing one, two in, one, two out, moving front to back. Nathan? Excellent. Next drill is called a lateral leg whip. One foot's going to stay inside the ladder, hitting each square. The trail leg goes front to back, outside of the ladder. Nathan? This drill is a high knee lateral movement with a non-stop change of direction at the end. We're moving down the ladder one direction. We're coming back in the opposite direction without changing or stopping our movement to transition. Jamal? Excellent. Feet keep moving. Feet keep moving right back in the other direction. Excellent. Excellent. This is the scissors drill with a non-stop transition at the end of the ladder. We're moving down in one direction, we're coming right back in the opposite direction without stopping or altering our movement. Colette? Excellent. Both feet in each square. Good, good, good. Excellent. <laughs> 